evening, friends, or afternoon, as the case may be, and welcome to the Bill Crane Report with Dwayne Weiss. Hi, everybody. And this is the election special. We have a special guest here, uh, the Democratic nominee for Vice President Tim Kaine. And we also have a turnip here. And I wonder if you folks can tell the difference between the two. Um, I will Kane, point, and you guess. Yeah. This is. Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. All right. I, and it, who's that? Yep. You didn't guess. You folks uh, obviously are confused, and so were the voting public. That's because right. Tim Kaine brought about as much as a turnip would to the campaign. He was awful in that debate with Pence. He couldn't. He was so rude. Kept interrupting Pence, and I don't know of one thing that man did. So they could have saved a lot of money and nominated a turnip. That's, That's right. my feeling about all of this. Now, before we get going, by the way, this is going to be just all about the election. So stay tuned here. We're going to rattle on this stuff. But before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the passing of Helen Cleary at the age of 96. Uh, Helen will be remembered as uh, quite a lady. She was a U.S. Marine Corps veteran of World War II, a professor of public health at UMass Medical, and she was Norfolk's first female selectman. Uh, she brought competence, compassion, and class to the board. Her first thought was to get the job, get the job done to the best of her ability. Norfolk is certainly the poorer with the loss of this dedicated lady. Certainly is. Yep. So, <clears throat> on that note, the uh, popular vote uh, in the 2016 election uh, was won by Hillary Rodham Clinton, 61,900,000 something to 60,900 uh, something. A, uh, a, a difference of about a million votes. Trump carried 30 states, Clinton carried 20. In the Electoral College, Donald Trump has 290 now and will have 306 yep. when Michigan is officially um, called. When Who knows when that'll be? But I think they have a date that they have to do they it by, and I think it's coming up fast. And Hillary Clinton has 232. So in the Electoral College, that was a landslide. Certainly is. And it's a mandate. Yep. Um, on so, a lot of different fronts. Yeah. So do you have some thoughts on the winners? Who are the winners in this election, Dwayne? I think the United States is the winner. Well, you're absolutely right. This, this great this was, win. Yeah. This, this election took so many people by such a surprise. But you and I... Well, don't forget, folks. Well, the last thing we, well, the last uh, show that we did, the last thing we did, we made a prediction. Guess who? Guess who? Guess we're yeah. right. Donald Trump. We both picked him, and we both picked, both stated the reasons why yep. we yep. felt he would win. I felt all along he would win. Again, I go back to it one more time, just one more time, and that is Jerry Falwell's. Silent majority. Yep, that term silent majority. That's they, right. They yeah, were folks, out there. And I talked to a lady today, and uh, she said to me, uh, she said, I voted for Trump. Yep. She said, but you know, I couldn't talk to any of my friends about it. They would have gone berserk. Oh. Well, we talked it. I used to, I called him, it wasn't pejorative, a Joe yeah. Six Pack. Yeah. Right. Drives a, drives a pickup truck, goes to work every day, but cuff stops home, gets a six pack. He's not interested in any poll. He's not interested in anybody else's opinion. He's not going to give you his opinion either. Nope. Nope. But there are millions of those guys. He's the there. same thing as Joe the plumber. That's right. Yeah. Same guy. Yep. And they are not the kind of guys that um, are going to uh, get involved in all of this polling and no, all that. not at all. And if you call him, he'll probably tell you to mind your own business. Hang up on you, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I had a call last night. I'm, I promised myself I'd stick to this, but I had a call last night that infuriated me. 
lady calls me and she said, hello, Mr. Crane? I said, yes. She said, I'm Blah Blah from the Blah Blah Institute. She says, are you pro-choice or are you pro-life on the abortion issue? I said, what? Ooh, what? I said, who in the hell are you to be asking me a question like that? I said, you got to be joking me. I said, if I called you tonight at home and asked you that question, you'd tell me to take it and stuff it in my ear. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't believe. I said, let me ask you a question. Who's paying your salary? I can't give you that information. I said, well, I can't give you any information either. And whammo, I hung up. I don't know who, what side she was on, but that was one hell of a way to approach me. Uh, I'm not sure what they were after at that point. I, I don't who know. Who was it? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, none of their business. Yeah. Uh, ah, but you're right. This was a victory for all solid, decent, honest Americans yep. all over this great land. I'm telling you. Well, he, was, he wasn't the best possible. No, he wasn't. But he was the best of the two. You better believe it. Yeah. Uh, working people everywhere, blue collar, white collar. And I'm going to tell you something else too, Duane. If when we step back from this and the dust settles, and if the Republicans go about their business in a proper fashion, I'll make another prediction. The labor unions will begin to support Trump. Oh, yeah. yeah. If we get the XL pipeline, mm -hmm. if we get this changed and yep. that changed, we get the coal miners working again. The infrastructure co uh, construction starting to go again. The, <clears throat> those people will say, gee, I think my bread is buttered on the other side right. from what I thought. And the other thing, too, is um, an interesting statistic. We have in this country a 500-year supply of coal. That's right. We don't want to burn it here in this country. We're going to start those power plants back up again. But if... Uh, we can certainly sell it around the world. world yeah. oh, absolutely. And, and it's good for the world mm -hmm. because the Chinese are building, and I think it's a hundred more coal-fired power plants, but they have dirty coal over there. Yes, they do. The American coal is clean coal. It's a lot better for the atmosphere. And we, have a, we really haven't spent a lot of, we have spent money and time, but not a lot of money and time to clean up coal. Absolutely. We've just scratched, technologically, we've just scratched the surface on that. You know, we need a Manhattan Project. Exactly. To clean up the burning of coal. Yep. But you know what? This administration didn't want well, they didn't to want coal. do it. That's they, they right. Fight it all the way. Clinton, yep. go back to the Clinton administration. They didn't want yep. to do it. And George Bush, there's a lot of things I like about George Bush, and then there's a lot of things I didn't like about him. I don't think he had a clue mm -hmm. about coal. But um, law enforcement personnel, this is a big pat on the back to them, too. Absolutely. This They've is a big win for them um, to show that this country is behind our We finally got somebody on their side. Police After departments. all these years. That's absolutely right. Our military. Yep. Our military is going to stand tall again. Well, it's, it's deplorable right now. Yeah. Um, it's been uh, picked clean. The, the budgets have been cut so far. I heard last night that they gave several countries that are way, way ahead of us now. We haven't developed a new mis or, uh, military missile system or a defense system. In 20 years. They're still flying the B-52s. That's right. That's our nuclear strike force. Yep. Um, and the uh, law and order, generally speaking, mm -hmm. has won a big victory. Yes, here. they have. The National Rifle Association and the Second Amendment protecting our right to own and bear arms. Yep. Who bellied up to the bar and put their money down? Mm -hmm. The NRA. Yeah, they did. I don't want to hear any more about the NRA is this and the NRA is that. It backs 
hunters, sportsmen, sportsmen. Yep. gun owners, people that are guaranteed the right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. The Second Amendment has won a big deal mm -hmm. here, too. Um, the Supreme Court is going to win because they're going to be reinforced with solid people who uh, are going to interpret the Constitution properly. Yeah. That aspect alone is probably one of the most important aspects of this election because that's going to influence who this country is, the direction they're going, and what we're going to do or what we're going to be or what we're not going to be for generations. Absolutely right. Supreme Court is going to start talking yep. about abortion. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They're going to be asked about it. Our freedom to practice our religion, which right. we are being coerced into not doing uh, so that we can worship our God as we see fit. And this business about you can't have God in the yeah. schools. You can't have God portrayed during Christmas time. You can't have Jesus yeah, you in can't the say Christmas. No. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. And I it think we can appoint jurists to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We'll get this situation straightened out. We've won a tremendous victory in this country, a victory for real freedom, energy independence. Yep. Do you know what, did you hear the announcement today on the news? They've discovered a, well, uh, an oil find in West Texas. Yes, I did hear something that about is that. That is bigger than the existing, three times bigger, they, mm -hmm. they figured, than the uh, existing uh, Bacchus fields, uh, yeah. back fields. And yeah. there's tremendous uh, gas fields with it. Yeah. Uh, talk about energy. Now, that's going to drive the price of energy down so that we all benefit from that except the Exxons and the uh, uh, Chevrons and all of that, they're going to, well, uh, they'll find a way they'll, around They'll find it. a way of getting yeah. money out of it. But, but you know what else it does? It weakens Iran, oh, it weakens Russia. The whole Middle East. The whole Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, their clout goes yeah. down. Yeah. Tell us about your boycotts again, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, and, and we can really start. Along with the hydro, uh, hydroelectric power that we're signing contracts mm -hmm. to bring down from Canada, this continent, um, North America, can be energy independent. Oh, absolutely. Just look at where it was where we were in the 80s. We, yeah. were, we, were, Strangled. we were so worried about everything with the energy. We were just going to run out of energy. OPEC was going to own us. And, uh, yep. We are going to have to sell our kids to the... Uh, yeah. Sheiks over, shakes over there, however they pronounce it. People are stockpiling a couple of cords of wood so they had some yeah. heat, you know. Yeah. Uh, the XL pipeline is a winner. Mm -hmm. Now, unless there's some something strange lurking in the background, that should be a go very quickly. Yep. Uh, they're already talking to Canada, to the Canadian officials up there. We, we should be able to plug that into the go machine shortly. I, I don't know what the, well, there, there's always somebody that is negative, doesn't of course. like something. But when you, when you look at pipelines, it, you just can't justify not using them. They are so much safer than and rail the transportation. That's right. Or tractor trailers. Yeah. Oh, Bob, by the way. It always, always scared me when I was on the road. Not so much around Hicks, we have regulations against them, but the double trailers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. And in Germany, they had triples. Mm -hmm. well, I see those doubles uh, of the Holland petroleum products around them, saying to myself, oh, God, you know, if that. Give them a wide berth. Let them babies go. Yeah. Domestic manufacturers, all businesses, large and small, as they are the lifeblood of our economy. Yep. Oh, absolutely. They stand to benefit here. When we cut business taxes, this is going to be a big thing, a big thing. We can stem that overseas flow of jobs. Yeah, yeah. And we can talk some turkey to those companies about bringing mm -hmm. the stuff back. Yep. The unborn, precious, innocent babies, they win. Yeah. 
The union workers, we talked about that, but I'll tell you, the union workers, when they realize that management and labor do not have to exist in a permanent adversarial relationship, adversarial relationship. Yeah, to steal uh, someone's uh, thunder, yes, stronger together. The dismantling of Obamacare and a return to affordable health care. Mm. That's a big winner for Joe Sixpack, all the way oh. up to everyone in our economy. I mean, that was a horrible boondoggle. Well, so they lied to us. Going, oh, if you like your doctor, you can keep, keep your them. doctor. You like your health plan? You no can keep problem. your health plan. Yeah. And those were all lies. Just plain out. Yeah. They, they knew it was going to happen. Of course they did. They gave you the, the, the best scenario. And, and that it, guy uh, from Boston that wrote that whole damn thing yep. and then came out and said, we didn't tell the people the truth because they're, right. too stupid stupid. To yeah, they're too stupid to understand it. Because they're stupid to understand it. Or else you get the, the, the politicians that the pro there, oh, I know all about it. It was 6,400 pages. Did you read it? No, I didn't have to read no. it. No, I, Nancy Pelosi said, yeah, Pelosi, just shut yeah. up and vote for yep. it. Yeah. Wow. Um, those people living in ghettos, trapped by economic inequality, living in substandard housing and terrified by criminals and thugs, better days are coming for them. Yeah, I think so too. This guy, Donald Trump, may be a lot of things, but he gets things done. That's right. You can't, you can fold him on a lot of things and some of the things were PC and some weren't, but... You're right. He's a doer. He's a doer, and he says, get out of my way. Yep. I'm going to get some, you know, well, you're going to break some eggs here when you make that omelet. Right That's up. fine. That's fine, yep. Um, the U.S. Senate, as Harry Reid leaves. So long, Harry. One of the worst, most yep. poisonous people to ever serve in Washington. He didn't care what... His, what his responses were, whether they true or, or his, his accusations, it didn't matter to him. He just did it. Terrible, terrible yep. man. He accused Mitt Romney of never filing income taxes. Yep. And when it was revealed afterwards that he had lied about it, you know what he said, folks? He didn't win, did he? Yeah. I, I got yeah. done what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'll take whatever means I, I need, need to, to do, do to yep. beat the other guy. What a what, It's a poor individual. Yep. Sheriff David Clark of Milwaukee County in Wisconsin. I have a hunch there's an important job in Homeland Security I coming hope so. for him. That man is a sharp individual. Boy, I'll tell you what. And he calls it like he yep. sees it. And he says, and he eventually, it's like the guy on TV, the, the windows that says, not on my watch, yeah. you don't. Yeah. ADT guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that I don't know. If, if you haven't seen this guy, he's, he's a tall black man. Yep. Yeah. Very well spoken and well thought out and really liked it for the most part in Milwaukee County, which is the city of Milwaukee. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he doesn't, there's nothing racial about him. There's nothing, he's just common sense. And tough. Yeah, and tough. Yep. I'll tell you what, if you were in a platoon in combat, you'd want him yep, exactly. with you. He is just a tough fellow. And he's a great guy. Boy, and he makes more common sense. Talking, oh, yeah. Hearing him talk, you say to yourself, I'd vote for him for president tomorrow. Yeah, I would Bingo. too. Bingo. I would too. I would. Yep. Absolutely. Um, also, the people in California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, as the illegal immigrant onslaught is stopped, yeah. perhaps their lives can go back to being normal. Mm -hmm. Our great friends in Great Britain, who were shunned and humiliated by President Obama as he somehow relived the colonial days, I guess. I have no better guess as to why he acted the way he did. I don't either. He, 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 he seemed to want to go out of his way to antagonize. Yeah. Not only people that are adversaries, but he antagonized friends and allies. Because I 
think Great Britain sent over so many people to this country, or so many came to this country mm -hmm. from Great Britain, from uh, Germany, from France, from Italy. These people are the majority today in this country. This yep. is the white establishment, and I think that he felt that he didn't want to go in that direction. Yep. And he, uh, he wanted to go to uh, the other parts of the world, Africa, Asia, and he spent his time there with those people. How many times did he go to Malaysia? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I have no idea why he acted why he did, but I think that that's, if we could get in underneath, mm -hmm. and the colonial, Great Britain being the colonial power in Africa rankled him. And, yeah, I, I think he, the, the liberals in this country say no, but I believe that he's going to have a lot more respect in the world with the world leaders, particularly the tough guys. You know, Zing, Zang, and yep. China, and yep. uh, and uh, Putin, and, and well, nobody's going to get any kind of influence with North Korea because they're just crazy. No, absolutely <clears throat> mad, mad hatters. No, God, all they're just crazy. But you know, we did nothing about. North Korea. No. They sit over there and build nuclear bombs and missiles. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'll send John Kerry over again. Yeah, yeah he'll get things done. The only thing you do with North Korea is work through China. Yeah, you've and got you, to. You've got to work through China and you've got to cooperate with China. That's right. And you've got to make China understand, yep. look, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this, but here's the end game right over here. Mm -hmm. Korea, you're going to get that straightened out. Um, the biggest losers in the 2016 election. Well, I know. Uh, Barack Obama's phony legacy is in shadows. Yep. I mean, we we are going to see, as we look at this in the light of day, what a poor president he was. And we already see it. But well, this, this is the this is the death knell of his legacy. Yeah, that's it. It's all <laughs> over. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's the frustration, it seems to me, that so many of the demonstrators are having. The free lunch is over. Yeah, well, if you want to get into demonstrations, there's so many factions of that. There's yeah. no, no continuity. There's none. If there's 10 people, they got 10 different causes. And George and they, they Soros need, is paying half of them. Yeah, and they're not even sure themselves what their cause that's right. is. Yeah. I'll, I'll get to that later. Yeah, that, me too. Uh, um, the PC mindset. Yeah, that maybe we can get back to speaking honestly with one another rather than the phony talk. Oh, you can't say that. Yeah. Oh. You can find that PC is a lot more dangerous than just irritating. <sighs> it is. It's a two-edged sword. You bet you it is. Um, by uh, Marty Walsh. His connections to the White House have vaporized. Yep. Yeah, he was talking about before the election. I'd be able to. I'm going to be able to pick up the phone and call the White House and get action for all the work that I've done for Hillary and blah blah. Oh dear! Don't, don't he, believe for a second that Marty, someplace, envisioned himself with some kind of important job in D.C. with Hillary's administration. And how? Now when he calls the White House, it's going to be, Marty sorry, who? wrong Marty, number. Marty who? <laughs> Ditto for Stephen Lynch, who really yeah. wanted to be appointed to a good job, like Secretary of Labor or yep. something like that. His tongue was hanging a mile out. Uh, tough luck, huh? John Kerry. In 66 days, he will only be a memory, a bit player in an eight-year nightmare. You can go back. Sailing his yacht. And there was a piece in the paper today. They're trying to convince him to run for governor against yeah, Governor Baker. That's right. I'll tell you this. That would be a lovely battle, those two. It would be. It would be fun. Mara Healy, or Martha Coakley Jr., as we've come to know her, the, will this little fraud now have to go back to the humdrum job? She's getting paid.
paid to do rather than uh, the nonstop roasting about for Auntie Hillary. That's right. I mean, she spent the last year on the road, on the rubber chicken circuit. That's right. Uh, and, and, and we're paying her we're paying for that. Her. That well, is an absolute outrage. And just like her predecessor, cases, that's her offices where cases go to die. That's exactly right. And I think Charlie Baker's a big loser, too. No friends in Massachusetts, no friends in Washington, no friends, period. I mean, he managed to screw up a Republican win. Yeah. Uh, I, statistically, he was wrong this, right now. Yeah. I think he can be salvaged. Yeah. But he better put on some big boy pants. Yeah, he's got to put his big boy pants on. Um, oh, by the way, I feel so bad for Katy Perry, Whoopi Goldberg, Jay-Z, Al Sharpton, Miley Cyrus, Jon Stewart, Rosie O'Donnell. Because they have to leave the country? Bra Bra Streisand, Amy Schumer, Cher, and a few other forgettable names who parade around pretending to be entertainers or human beings. Have you been on the phone to see what do they want for their houses? Do you know, I pray that Trump says to the Attorney General's office or whatever, prepare immigration papers, papers for yeah, them they've already declared. and get them to them, FedEx them to them, yep. and then we'll publicize the fact that we have. And write a cover letter saying, how can we help you expedite this move out of the country? Because I know you're going to do it because you gave us your word. Did you see what Spirit Airlines did? No. They put out a special, an election special to Canada. It's a one-way discount ticket to Canada because they said, well, there's so many celebrities that want to go to Canada to move there. So we figured we'd make a, make a special. It was $49 to Canada. For Beautiful. Me. Get rid of this whole miserable bunch of phonies. Yeah. 49 right. It's bucks. It's only one oh. way. One way. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, that damn Alex Baldwin was going to leave when Bush got yeah. elected? If Bush gets elected, I am I'm leaving the country. Here. That yeah. fraud is still here. I know. Oh, man. And by the way, uh, some other losers to CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, NBC. CBS, ABC, NBC, the New York Times, the Boston Globe, and last but not least in my heart anyway, the Attleboro Sun Chronicle, which absolutely, they were shameless in their support of Hillary Clinton. Yep. Uh, their editorialists, um, they, they simply should be fired. I mean, they are horrible. Uh, Jim Hand had a column the other day, his first column after the election. Man, you'd think he was talking about something that did, you know, didn't happen in another world or something. He is another world. Oh, boy. Um, the campus crybabies with their demonstrating. Baloney, it's rioting. Destruction of property, and it's about time the National Guard was called in. Arrests need to be made, jail sentences handed out to mm -hmm. these hoodlums. But Obama won't do it. No. No. Billionaire George Soros, who bankrolls these phony protesters, is another loser. Juan Williams from Fox News. Do you know, I watched Fox News that whole night. I did too. And Juan Williams was about as, he was about as far off the reservation as you could get. I don't know what's going on here. You know, you people are jumping to conclusions. Oh, yeah. This yeah. isn't over yet. Oh, God. Just wouldn't give it up. Polsters are also losers. Polsters, I think, are go have a tough road coming back to any credibility. Yeah, when they, you spend that much time, that much money, in that many different directions and still get everything dead wrong, there's something wrong with the science. How about the political pundits to the yeah. talking heads, the, talking the heads. consultants? Yeah. Every single one of them blew it. Yeah. Um, the Silicon Valley group, oh, well, that's a shame oh, that yeah. they're upset too. Bozos. 
Uh, Nancy Pelosi's upset. She's very upset. Yeah. Do you feel bad about her? She's one person I cannot cannot stand. I, I just don't have any time for it. And you, I've watched her over the years. She does nothing but whine. She does nothing but but get indignant. She never has any solutions to us. Any nothing. Any, nothing. What the hell is she there? She ain't that pretty. No. No. And one of the, now I'm getting to the last two losers. Elizabeth Warren. That's a major loser. Who somehow thinks she's somebody. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's a loud, screaming socialist. Yep. Strange that Harvard would employ both her and her husband at that pro prestigious house of learning. Now, tell me something. When you spend sixty or $70,000 a year to send um, your kid to Harvard, mm -hmm. don't you expect top-flight education, fair and balanced education yes. that will serve them well going forward. Or would, do you think that you're paying $70,000 for a screaming socialist, no. burn, baby, burn. We have to burn this country down and rebuild it my way. I'm talking in the abstract here. but We've, we've lost touch yeah. of uh, upper educa upper level education. And originally, it should have been, or it was, to teach new ideas, new concepts. You know, you or I went to school, we, have, we were there some of our experiences, and all of a sudden, we're introduced to new experiences, new, some new ideas here. And we could bring them in and make ourselves into a better person. Not now. Now it's a, it's a PC thought process. Um, I was the, one of the um, young ladies that uh, is on Fox uh, every once in a while, one of the contributors, said that uh, when she was in college, uh, she expressed a point of view more of the conservative nature mm -hmm. rather than the liberal nature. Yep. She got lower marks, mm -hmm. even though she got A's or something on her tests. But the classroom participation dropped her down. Oh yeah, it, yeah. that's that's very because common today. You, yeah, because if you step off the path yep. that the professor is expounding on, if you're over here off the path over in the grass, you're wrong. Yeah, absolutely wrong, well. and that's wrong. Uh, nah. And finally, I saved the last for best, a uh, best for last, Hillary. Rodham Clinton, the consummate insider, cold, arrogant, secretive, unable to relate to or communicate with the common man. She's like a fried egg that's been on the griddle too long. Take her off and toss her in the wastebasket because she's all done. That's it. Let's hope that she has the decency and the good sense to quickly fade from the picture, and that she and Uma retire gracefully and quietly and walk off into the sunset, hand in hand, quietly discussing life and wondering how two nice ladies like them married a pair of SOBs like Bill and Anthony. Yeah, that's a real puzzle, all right. It certainly is. The New York Post had a ball with Mr. Weiner. The headlines. Did you see the one last week? Oh, I probably did. Luma <laughs> cuts off Weiner. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I, I, saw that. I got a little picture of it. <laughs> Do you know that this whole stuff, Hillary and Bill, Yeah. Anthony and Uma, uh -huh. it's so good that if you ever wrote this in a fictional book, oh, yeah. nobody uh, would buy it yeah. because it'd say, hey, things like this can't happen. Yeah. These four hopeless misfits, and that's what they are. Uh, just, it, it's, it's too good to be true. And there was the second one a week before, it was something with them. I want to get it real close if I can. It was another wiener brings down another Clinton. 
that New York Post, are, they are masters Pithy. at, the, at their, their headlines, their front pages. And the Democratic Party, lastly the Democratic Party, and whenever I think of them, I always end up trying to figure out this puzzle. When 90% of the blacks vote Democrat, they are described as a local, a loyal constituency. Yep. When 75% of the Hispanics vote for the D machine, they are considered loyal foot soldiers. But when 70% of the whites vote for Trump, they are described as racist, racist. homophobic, knuckle-dragging troglodytes. Isn't that and amazing? Haters. Just amazing. How does this add up? How it, can you make this add up? I've asked that for years. It's unbelievable. Yep. Um, finally, the liberal freak show is over. And sound, clear-thinking grown-ups take over. Okay. And boy, are they mad about it. Yep. And with the aftermath of that election, though, I got one more big loser. Go ahead. Really the First Amendment. Right. Right now, you're seeing the erosion of the First Amendment like we've never seen in oh, years and years and years. Even wartime, they weren't censoring like they're censoring now. We'll get a replacement on there for Anthony Scalia that oh, yeah. thought like him, and we'll get all of that straightened out. You can't, you take your life in your hands with a Trump uh, bumper sticker even. Mm -hmm. you, you just can't do it. I mean, it, it's a, there's one here. The, Recently, last week, there was two young men, two boys, young men, students, whatever you want, they were Babson students, had the audacity to drive around Wellesley with a Trump flag. I know. And, audacity. And, and, and Kerry Healy apologizes yeah. uh, for, for the university for this embarrassment. Yeah. And not only that, they got that one kid. This, this bothered me. He's like in front of the camera. Now Babson has threatened to throw him out of school. Well, fortunately, the other kid's got a little, some balls. Or this one doesn't. And he's in the front of the camera, and he's like, I'm sorry for embarrassing myself, my school, my family, my doggy, on and on and on. You know what it reminded me of? When they, the North Vietnamese drug out the POWs in the Hanoi Hilton and made them confess and be sorry for all their, their, all their, their sins, sins that yeah. they committed. That was the same thing. Absolutely. These kids didn't do anything wrong. They pounded on them and pounded on them, and then they put them in front of the camera yeah. and said, now fess up. Fess up. That's, Otherwise, this is terrible. This is, this is sort of like Nazi Germany. Of course it is. Those are, those are the tactics And they think this is okay. Yeah. This, this group thinks that's, that, oh, yeah. that's normal. That yeah. shouldn't, that's not normal. Those that's were, not American. Those, those were haters. Yeah. They had a Trump flag. Boy, oh boy. <sighs> that, well, you know, I have a similar uh, sort of thing here to ask you about now. Should Obama issue a blanket pardon for Hillary Clinton for all her sins. You surely are not serious asking me that, are you? Yeah. No. Okay. You, um, got, you got some. The, I think that, the, the, I think there's three points here. I think that this, if he does that, it takes a sticky situation right off the table for the Republicans. Okay. I think that's a good thing. Second point, th this is my favorite. By accepting this pardon, Hillary is admitting there is guilt, whether she's willing to say it or well, not. Well, that's true. That, that her, part's very true. Her actions will speak louder. Otherwise, than... you say, you pardon me for what? Mm. Mm. She doesn't have to accept the pardon, by the way. That's right. Okay. Um, so, thirdly, the country does not need another one to two years of this legal agony with all its anger, all its deceptions, all its emotional costs, not to mention how much money it's going to cost. And to what end? 
We know she's a dreadful person, dishonest, corrupt, serial liar. Her behavior has been a devil's brew of carelessness, stupidity, and arrogance brought on by her misguided insistence that she is owed by rights of entitlement and gender anything she wants. Mm. We don't need a court conviction to solidify our opinion of her. As I said before, send her out hand in hand into the sunset and let her go and become an asterisk on a footnote in history. I like that part that she'd have to admit guilt. Yeah. Oh, That's yes. Be, yeah. And <clears throat> I think, I think it would be the best thing for the Democratic Party and the Republican Party to send her packing. Mm -hmm. I really and truly do. Uh, well, we'll see how it all washes out. I'm not the brightest guy in the world. Uh, that it's been suggested that I am really sharp, but I'm not. I'm just yeah, well, both of us Joe Sixpack. But I would call a meeting, and I'd call in five or six of the biggest insurance companies in the country, Northwest, MetLife, okay. uh, et al. Yeah. And I would say to them, give me two of your best and brightest people, senior people, mm -hmm. not losers. Right. And we're going to sit down and we're going to rewrite Obamacare. And I want a mini Manhattan crash program. Make them work together or separately. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But they must retool this mess almost immediately. And it's got to be done seamlessly. And do you know who I'm going to appoint to head that little... Who? Mitt Romney. Good choice. He did a decent job here in the state with health insurance. Yep. He's a smart guy. He bailed out the Olympics. He can do this. He can do that kind of stuff. And you know what? If the insurance companies will work with the government and send in good people, yep. mm -hmm. this thing can get done in a few months. Yep. Um, oh, by the way, here's a nightmare. Would you like a nightmare to dream about tonight? Sure, why not? Um, being invited to Bill and Hillary's house for a dinner party with Chelsea and Uma, Donna Shalala, Butch Napolitano, Donna Brazil, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Maggie Hassan, Madeline Albright, Rosie O'Donnell, Candy Crowley, and Whoopi Goldberg and being served a cold consomme of turnip, cauliflower, beets, okra, and Brussels sprouts. And then have Bra Bra Streisand and Justin Bieber's singing duets of rap music with foul and obscene lyrics. And then if all this nightmare isn't bad enough, it ends with Bill and Bra Bra heading off hand in hand to the Lincoln bedroom again. <laughs> There's only one thing sal salvageable from that whole thing. What's that? I like beets. <laughs> <laughs> well, by gosh. Let me tell you. I don't think, after I wrote this, I don't think I would ever sleep again after that. That would, be a, that would be a horror show. Oh. Hey, by the way, Larry Sabado is a pretty uh, uh, sharp a college professor mm -hmm. that comments a lot about the inner workings of politics. Yep. A lot of his stuff is polls driven. He discovered that some of the polling firms were using 2012 data to, for their 2016 computer modeling. Mm -hmm. And he said this was just lazy and dumb. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you wonder sometimes how these people managed to mess it up. Well, mm -hmm. Um, Their platform was screwed up to start yeah, with. Yeah. And uh, uh, later in the in the uh, polls, they started to admit what was the Democratic bias in it. First, they never said anything. Then you found out, well, we were we were polling eight 
percent, 10 percent, 12 percent more Democrats than we were anybody else. Yeah, because that's what happened in that district the last uh, 12 yep. four years before. They had and, that many and, more in Democrats. order to so, balance this, so we put off. that same parameter in. That's right. Of course, we were, were getting the the answers exactly what we wanted. Of course, they weren't right, but no, they were exactly, they were what, exactly we wanted. what we wanted. Yeah. Yep. By the way, through the night, Fox News, I thought was great. Brett Hume. Boy, I'm telling you something. He's just still, even though he's sort of semi-retired, he's mm. number one. I like listening to him. Yep. Brett Baer mm. and Chris Wallace. I thought they were great. Like Chris Wallace uh, asks some tough questions, I'll tell you. But, you know, I guess finally we come to this question. How did Mrs. Clinton lose? The answer is very simple. She refused to talk to the citizens of America. Yep. She refused to talk to regular folks at the town meetings in New Hampshire. Only Democratic operatives were allowed to attend, and they were given a question to ask her. Yep. She refused to take questions for the pre from the press for over 300 days. No press conferences whatsoever. Not you can't you can't count that phony thing at the airport no. where the four female reporters asked her four softball questions that were all. Or the ones you stand in the aisle on her plane. Yeah, if you can't talk to voters, if you cannot stand on your own two feet, yep. stick your chin out and say, "Okay, give me your best shot," how the hell can you run a country? You can't, and the people realized it. They realized. She wouldn't or couldn't lower herself to talk to them. She lost relativity with the majority of the country. Absolutely. She, we, she exhibited herself and hooked herself up to a certain group of elite. And the rest of the people, to hell with you. Yep. Reminds you of the great line by Martha Coakley. You expect me to stand in yeah, the cold right, and right. shake hands with them? What? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the exact attitude that Hillary Clinton took. Mm -hmm. You expect me to answer questions from them? The great unwashed? Yeah. And yet, Trump went to these town meetings. Yep. He took every question. Um, some of them were interesting replies. Yeah. Um, but he took them. And he stood there. Sometimes you held your breath to That's, see what he was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Please, please don't go there, we would say. And, you know, she, and that brings us to the second part of the answer. She felt entitled to the presidency, as though she were royalty. She had the right of ascension. And now it is her turn to fade from view, angry and hurt by the circumstances that befell her. But they were her own making. Yeah. History will deal harshly with Mrs. Clinton, but it is a nest that she built twig by twig all by herself. She deserves the verdict that history will hand down. Yes, she does. Um, uh, early voting. You know, I witnessed this. I don't think this is a good idea. I don't either. Oh, I think it's a bad idea. When you saw who was praising it from start to finish, you thought, uh, uh, there's something wrong here. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was too, too much praise for, oh, this is so wonderful. Yeah. But you never saw a conservative say that. And, yeah. and when the bombshells started landing and people's minds changed. For a lot of people, it was too late. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did. I went up and voted early. I think I voted like the, the last day that you could vote early. Okay, I didn't. Uh, but I was just too I, lazy to go there. I wouldn't do that again. I, I don't think that's a good idea. You, you, you know, know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know what I thought was really, there's trouble with this? She was in Florida, and I don't exactly remember where it was, Hillary. And she, when she gets that squawky voice, mm -hmm. when she tries that scream, that screamy, she tries to squonky, scream, and it yeah. comes out like a horse, almost like a raven croaking. Yeah, you just want to smash your own TV. She yeah. said, 
there's a place right across the street that's going to be open till 5 o'clock tonight to early vote. I want each and every one of you, when we leave here, walk across the street and vote. Yeah, regardless whether you're registered or not, yeah, or in a different precinct or whatever, just go over just, there. I want to lock in those votes. And I thought, no, well, that's not right. You're taking the people who, you got them all excited and you got them all excited, you know, that mob mentality, and then you're trying to push them over there and get them to vote. That, that's manipulation. I'm not there. I didn't like that at nope, all. Nope, nope. I wouldn't have liked it if Trump did it. You were absolutely right. So it wasn't the fact that it was just Hillary. It just wasn't right. I know. By the way, let's, well, you know, you and I are crusty old curmudgeons. Curmudgeons, that's what yep. we are. That's what our wives call so us. So let's, let's take a look at this and show our softer side, our more feminine it's side. It's just the usual grouchy old farts. Yeah. yeah. Universities are using singing, oh, yeah. puppy cuddling, <laughs> and cry rooms yep. as methods to help students who are distraught and upset over Trump's yeah. victory and cannot cope with their emotions. Compare this, if you will, to the bunch, the, compare, compare this bunch, if you will, to the young men, 17 and older, who answered their nation's call That's right. after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. They joined the armed forces. They went out and fought and died all over the globe to save the world from the Axis powers. They didn't sit in a corner sobbing and saying, pass me a puppy, please. That's right. These Ah. These, these college students are supposed to be our future leaders. Yeah. How can you have a leader that breaks down over a simple election like this? It's not the end of the world. It, it's Howie Carr called them snowflakes, and I think that's a very good, a good analogy. Yeah. As soon as the heat got on, they melted. Yeah. They, they couldn't stand it anymore. It's... These are professional demonstrators. Oh, yeah. Uh, they don't even know what the hell they're they demonstrating don't. against. If there's 50 people out there, there's 50 different causes. Yep. yep. Everything from Black Lives Matter to anarchists. But I really think about a lot about the guys that, after Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. they stuck around. Some of them stayed home for Christmas. But boy, in January, them, yeah. they were lined up at the recruitment centers. Monday morning, they have the recruitment oh, yeah. center had lines yeah. up already. Yeah. Um, one other point. Donald Trump was opposed. I like this. Donald Trump was opposed, and he defeated the following groups. Democrats, yep. socialists, yep. the Republican establishment. That's for sure. That was a... That one was a tough one to overcome. The media. Oh, but that one was almost insurmountable. Wall Street bankers, Silicon Valley, yep. Hollywood, and all the entertainment perverts, um, the minority communities, and the debate moderators, yep. except for Chris Wallace. That's right. He took... Every one of them head on and beat them. If you look at that list, and if he was a prize fighter, you'd say, don't even stand up. No. Because you're done. No, all done. Everything. Hmm? You're, you're, you're beat before you start. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, what he did was unbelievable. And he did have some slips, but he most did. of those slips were, he wasn't a politician. He's got a mouth on him. It's, it's not the, the capital sin that should be disqualifying for everything. No. Nope. As far as some of those things he said, come on. PC People, run amok. That's what it is. That, that the, the locker room talking and stuff. I've been worked in, a, in situations where there, you know, a lot of women worked in a cannon factory. My wife was in the same factory. And where you, you walk up where they called the picking tables where the vegetables would come in. They'd have to pick out the little twigs and stuff. It was all women. You walk in there, it was like being sexually assaulted yeah. verbally. Yeah. Nobody, nobody said, oh, my God, those terrible women. Mm. 
Um, one of the uh, things, too, that uh, kind of, well, an interesting flat fact, if you will. Yep. The House is now 241 Republicans, 194 Democrats. Yeah, I think right. we lost like four seats something or something like that. One third of the Democratic caucus in the House is from three states, Massachusetts, New York, and California. Three. Three states. This is hardly a party of the people. Three minutes. Three minutes. Um, this is, oh, I, I love this one. You'll like this. Trump defeated Clinton 61 to 33 in Arkansas. Yeah. And isn't that the state that spawned Hillary and Bill? It certainly is. 61 to 33. I don't think Hillary they want to admit lost. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of stuff here to go. I'm not going to get some of this stuff. No. We, so wanna... listen, uh, we have some great stuff here. And uh, this column right here is the most absurd thing I've ever read in my life. So uh, we also have the Times yeah. apologizing. And so what we'll do, folks. And I've got is, some local stuff here that oh, we should be aware of yep. what's going on. So what we'll do, folks, is uh, we will come back with part two yeah. of election coverage. And we'll do that as soon as we can. And one last thing. Rahm Emanuel today was talking about the um, safety in Chicago uh, for the undocumented. And he said, oh. you are safe in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, as they murdered that 17 on Halloween weekend. Isn't that awful? Yep. And All right, next time we want to talk about sanctuary cities. Sanctuary too. cities, absolutely. And the consequences. Yep. And the electoral college. Yep. It's two things. That, yep. And then another thing we, this is, okay. Another thing we should just point out, folks. It's this time of year, the deer are, are bunching up. It's calling the rut season. When you're driving out at dusk and dawn, watch out because they're everywhere now. Yep. And by the way, the bucks yep. will lower their heads and run right, right into, into your vehicles yep. because uh, they want you out of the way when breeding season is yeah. there. They get go, out of their way. They go kind of nuts. They go nuts is right. Well, listen, uh, we did a good job here. We still haven't figured out which is the turnip and which is the real mm -hmm. guy, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's not a hair's worth of difference between the two. I wouldn't eat either one of them. <laughs> Folks. Next time, we'll be back at you with more coverage, and then we'll get back to whatever passes for normal around That's right. here. Very good. Folks, good night. Nice Thank you for you. tuning in. Take care.